wait, wait, wait. We have to start all the way at the beginning. How do you make the best chicken and rice? I'm satisfied with life. I do not just get by. I thrive. What a miracle to be up and alive. Yes, this is the only chicken and rice recipe you need. Do me the honor of subscribing, liking, and hitting that bell. Welcome to episode one of my recipe vlog. We're gonna cook something, hopefully learn something today, but if nothing else, I hope you had an amazing day and you ate something wonderful today. Let's get into it. I love grocery shopping when it's nice and clean, organized, and there was very few people in there this day. So anyway, chicken and rice is about customization. Today I'm using boneless, skinless chicken thighs and doy sausage. But again, use breast, use kielbasa, you can even use seafood. I use the same basic recipe for all my different flavored rices. So that's why I call it a master recipe. I prefer parboiled rice because it stands up to the cook time and you can mix it and it won't get soft and break but again use the type of rice that you prefer but just note softer delicate rices might break up a little bit yeah I forgot some noodles but that recipe is coming up so I had to grab them now screenshot the ingredients it's one box of broth and one onion I end up using less than I pictured the sofrito here is optional, but if you don't use sofrito or don't know anything about it, just use fresh garlic. I'm going to make sure to follow up with a recipe going over how to make sofrito. It's super easy and it's a flavor bomb. Use your preferred AP seasoning. I highly suggest to use Cajun or something more complex than just onion powder, garlic powder. Nothing wrong with that, but we're we looking for some real flavors here, some depth. And this is just a gentle reminder, clean your produce and also remove the stickers. Hey, I think our channel mantra is going to be, this is my food and I do what I want. I'm not going to make this controversial. If you don't clean your meat, that's your business. I use vinegar or lemon juice and then drain it. But do what makes you feel comfortable. If you like to do it raw out the pack, <laughs> you raw dog your chicken. I don't do that. I clean it and I'm going to trim off the excess fat. But it's your business. You're eating it. So, hey. And this is just a friendly reminder. You may not always see when I clean the counters. But clean your counters as you cook. That includes, you know, anything from the raw chicken or anything. It's just easier to clean as you go. Now here's a quick kitchen upgrade. Get smoked paprika. Regular paprika gives you color but not much flavor but smoke is going to amp it up. I'm using Cajun um, and I'm using another all-purpose mix but you choose however you like to do your chicken to stick in that realm, right? But take some suggestions here. If you just use garlic powder, onion powder, you know, I know a lot of people use Italian seasoning. Go explore your mixed seasons and see if you like something new but but if nothing else add smoked paprika season both sides and do this step first i'm intentionally doing my chicken first so it has time to let the flavors get in there while i'm prepping everything else keep the chop on your veggies pretty small i mean this is rice right so you don't want big chunks now i'm going to show you how i do bell peppers I cut around the sides and then cut off the bottom. It really reduces how many seeds you have to clean up. And this is just a method I picked up somewhere, probably on, you know, Facebook or YouTube or something. I don't know. I've been doing it for a long time now. But if you're not, I've never seen it, I hope this helps. Again, back to customization. I enjoy red bell peppers and yellow more than green so that's what i went with and my sofrito has green pepper in it but again you choose what works for you now i'm going to add sofrito 
this is how I make it. I make a batch of it and then I put it in an ice cube tray. These little silicone bottoms are the truth. It makes popping it out easy. I will link it below. Um, but let me know. Have you ever heard of sofrito? I know some cultures call it green seasoning. We're going to do a video on that and talk about it later. I have some frozen garlic. You can use the garlic, um, the paste garlic fresh garlic but please don't use garlic garlic is it's just not going to give what you needed to give trust me hey it's your business but just clean off the top just clean off the top i'm going to link below my can open if you're interested i like it because it does this thing while i'm walking around but hey you know check it out now it's time to cook it's all going to come together really quickly. So you see I put everything in bowls just to make it easier for myself to manage. So first we're going to brown off our sausage and we're going to brown our chicken on both sides. It's not imperative that you cook the chicken through because it's going to be steaming with the rice for 20 minutes. So it'll be there was no problem with it being raw at the end. We just want to brown it because if you take a look at the bottom of the pan you're gonna get that build up, that fawn. It's gonna give you the depth of flavor. And this is what this is really about right now. We're browning the chicken, um, and then we're gonna put our beautiful little vegetables and our seasoning in there. And it's really gonna create that depth of flavor on the bottom. It's not burning, it's fine. And you're gonna see how this works, right? So put that oil in there, and then you put your veggies in there sofrito and the garlic and it's all going to start coming off i don't really have to even scrub it off the bottom depending upon your pan i love this hex clad it's a bit of a cadillac of a pan but any good pot with a thick bottom will work well in this and you shouldn't have any problems if you consistently have problems with cooking rice it's probably the quality of your pan make sure it's a nice thick bottom now i'm adding some butter to the pan this is cowboy butter. I'll do a recipe on that, but just a compound butter. And if you don't have a compound butter, just use regular butter. Next, we're gonna cook off our tomatoes so they're not candy or have a tin taste to them. Here I'm using two tablespoons of uh, tomato paste. If you have the squeeze kind, it's perfect, and you can just reseal it back up. Then I'm going to cook off my uh, tomato sauce, and I have a small can, as well as I have crushed tomatoes. Really, you can use more of the crushed tomatoes if you like. You can use Rotel. If you, you know, it's it's about the texture that you want. If you don't mind the tomato pieces in there, Rotel might be a, a great fit for you because it's going to add extra flavor as well as give you that moisture that we're looking for, right? So again, customization. This is where you can play around with the recipe a lot. If you want a wetter rice, you like a lot of moisture, then you add a little bit more tomato. Don't up your tomato paste, but you want to up it on your crushed side or your sauce. And then again, you can use uh, seasoned tomatoes. Just make sure you're being mindful of the salt. You don't want to put too much salt in there. So be mindful of the salt that you're using. If you use a flavored tomato sauce or like Rotel or something, just pull back on the sauce a little bit. You can always add more at the end, but you can't take it away. Now comment down below. Do you have a favorite Rotel or do you have a favorite tomato sauce? Goya makes an awesome one that's seasoned and it's to perfection. But let me know. Also, let me know. Do you know about sofrito or green seasoning? It's crazy how many people have never heard of it. But I'm going to put you on. Now it's time to season our base. I'm using Cajun, some chicken bouillon. Um, it's one of my favorite things to use. It gives you some more flavor as well as salt. But again, let's be conservative with the salt up front. We can always add more towards the end. Now, I know I had three boxes in the picture, but I only used one. It was a pretty big box of uh, broth. Here I'm using low sodium chicken broth. Here's a little clutch tip if you're a home cook professional. Always get low sodium because you can always add salt into things. And by reducing the sodium in some of your ingredients, it allows you to add more of those all-purpose seasons that have more flavors in them, right? Like everyone's a kinder fanatic these days. So if you want to lean more into those, try to get low sodium products when possible. Now I tasted my sauce off camera. I'm pleased with it, so I'm putting my chicken. Yes, the chicken is not cooked. 
two things. I browned it. I let it sit in the last minute. I then sliced it before putting it back in the pot. Allowing to sit will stop it from rendering all of its juiciness and so it won't be dry. Yes, it can be still dry. I've had dry chicken and rice. So let it rest for a little bit before you chop it up. Then you're just gonna bring it back to a simmer. Let it go for like, you know, five to 10 minutes. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna see me check the pot and I'm gonna check the chicken for doneness. They're sliced up, you can easily tell when it's done. You wanna make sure the chicken is all the way done before you then test it again and adjust seasoning. I forgot the bay leaves, so I had to come back and uh, put the bay leaves in there. I'm highly going to encourage you to make sure you keep bay leaf on you. If you're making these type of recipes, it just really, it's no replacing bay leaf. So uh, I put the bay leaf in there, stir it up, and then we're just going to let it simmer until pretty much the chicken's done. So in about five to 10 minutes, we're gonna check it. I got a little part, so what they say, hydrate when you wait, right? So, got my adult beverage, yes, I'm over 21. And then we're gonna check our pot. We're gonna make sure that that uh, chicken is cooked through. And if it's not, just go, let it go a little longer. Now, I like to make sure my chicken is cooked through before I add rice. And the reason is, I like to adjust my seasoning. I'm gonna wait till the chicken is cooked through before I get to taste that. All right, so I'm pleased with it. It's cooked through. While I was waiting for my chicken to cook through and be good, and you see, I'm just pulling it up to the surface to look at it, and it's all good, and it's all finished. It's all cooked through. I rinsed the rice off camera. So again, while I was waiting, I rinsed the rice and now you're gonna see me taste it. Taste as you cook, you can adjust it as you go. Um, you know, you want as much flavor to infuse into that rice as possible. So I'm gonna try to get it close. Now I wanted a little bit more kick. It really wasn't for the salt side. So I was good with it, but I wanted a little bit more kick. So I went back in. Um, also, I'm using a good amount of rice and you're gonna see that. I think I used like, I, I do it by eyesight. Again, I put myself about an inch, an inch and a half under the surface of rice. That's how I measure. Um, but, you know, I, I want to say it was probably maybe like three or four cups of rice. It's a good amount. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I did this in a bulk recipe because I think most people make this type of thing in a bulk recipe. So I rinsed my rice. That's why it's in the bowl. And I'm going to go add some more. Again, easy way to tell your ratios is to make sure you have about an inch to an inch and a half from the top of your rice to the top of your pot. That's usually a good indicator. And then you'll also see me when I, when I stir it around, you'll kind of get a vibe of how much rice I have in there. Now here's the most crucial part of cooking rice. Once you have it well incorporated, right? You're gonna bring it back up to a simmer. You're gonna put the top on. You're gonna drop it to a, a you want a gentle simmer. So what I mean by that, not on high. Put it on low to medium low. Do not open the rice. Um, I'm doing parboil, so I'm doing 20 minutes. 20 minutes usually works for all rice, but I want you to see it. So this is like the first after five minutes you see the you see the water is still high off the rice and you can clearly see it bubbling. This is about five or six minutes before it's done. And you see now there's those little uh, holes in the rice, right? And you can barely see the bubble of water. That's about what it's gonna look like five minutes out. Now this is after 20 minutes. Everything's completely absorbed. It's immaculate, perfect texture. Don't even waste your time trying it right now because our last part of our steam is we're going to incorporate back everything that kind of boiled to the top and then we're going to close it for another five minutes and walk away do not touch it you are going to turn off the heat um, and you can remove it from the eye i didn't need to this immediately cools down but remove it off the eye and then you know you proceed go pour yourself a drink go set the table do not touch it 
the biggest part and that was me taking out the bay leaf but the biggest part where people fail with rice is they open the pot rice is steaming once you let the liquids escape it will not be the same so just always keep the top on 20 minutes then you're going to stir it around incorporate back your ingredients into the rice and then just do a final soak for five minutes with the heat off and i mean it's it always works especially with parboiled rice now other types of rice might cook differently but i'm going to highly suggest you perfect this recipe with parboiled rice first and then start to explore other types of rice now things i could have did differently I could have toasted my rice, something that you would see in a roast con pollo. I didn't do that here. I tried to keep this a master recipe that's going to be a little bit more universal and just easier to follow. But if you like to toast your rice, that's your business. Toast your rice. It is your food. You do what you want to do with it. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it found you in good spirits. And if not, I hope you're leaving in good spirits. Again. Thank you for coming to my channel. I hope you have a great day. And please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Take care.